Your angel in the whirlwind literally can be released and set in motion chaos across the world. These are real powers. Well, the dome and obelisk were very much a part of how the deity would be incarnated in the leader of that capital. I'm trying to figure out here, as I'm standing here, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to wind this down in the next five minutes. Through such imitative sex, the dome and obelisk became energy receivers capable of assimilating Ra's essence from the rays of the sun. What does that mean? It means it drew forth the seed. This is in symbolism. This is alchemistry. It drew forth the seed of the underworld Osiris. The seed of the dead deity would, according to the supernaturalism, transmit upward from out of the underworld through the base or testes of the obelisk and magically emit from the tower's head into the womb or dome of Isis. And in that way, according to this magical belief system, Osiris could be born again, the dying and resurrecting God. He can come back over and over. All right, in practical magic, how did Osiris, on rising from the underworld, actually become housed in a human body again? Well, in Egypt, where raising Osiris to life was perfected through these magical constructs, Pharaoh served as the fit extension. He was, by his government position, to become inhabited by the reborn God, to take residence in when the sex act was performed, by the way, at the largest uh, religious structure ever built, the temple of, of uh, Amun-Ra at uh, Karnak. That's where Pharaoh would go through the festival of Opet and become the inheritor of the resurrected spirit of uh, Osiris. I'm going to jump forward again. Thus Pharaoh was, just as the God ciphered on the great seal of the United States will be, the son and spiritual incarnation of Osiris, the god of Freemasonry. And ladies and gentlemen, in Washington, D.C., the dome and the obelisk stand ready for the metaphysical ritual to be performed in secret by the elite to make sure they are prepared. The magic ceremony has been rehearsed and ritualized in the house of the temple in the Herodome by the Supreme Council 33rd degree Freemasonry over Washington with every passing United States president since George Washington in anticipation of the ultimate future incarnation of Apollo Osiris. The occult tools they have at their disposal are without comparison. The obelisk in St. Peter's Square in Rome is not just any obelisk, it was one that was removed and took there from the ancient city of Heliopolis, the city of On in the Bible, dedicated to Ra, Osiris, and Isis. In Washington, the obelisk built by Freemasons and dedicated to America's first president is the largest, and I'm not being crude here, in their mythology size matters. It is the largest obelisk in the world at six, 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 six inches high. Some say 666.0. And at the base, six six, 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 six inches wide along each side at the base. What these alchemical utilities will be used for in the near future is not without practice and it is not without precedent in the United States. Through alch uh, Masonic alchemistry, presidential apotheosis, that is the leader of the United States, America's Pharaoh, being transformed into a god within the capital dome or womb of Isis, in sight of the obelisk of Osiris began with America's most uh, revered and first president, Master Freemason George Washington. As a matter of fact, uh, Masons in attendance at Washington's funeral in 1799 cast sprigs of acacia. Why? Quote, to symbolize both Osiris' resurrection, that is on earth, and Washington's imminent resurrection in the realm where Osiris presides, end quote. Meaning that they truly believed that the new president was becoming Horus. George Washington himself now rises within the underworld to become the Osiris. Let me say this very quickly. Do I have another five minutes? Yeah. yeah. No? Yeah. Three minutes. Okay, here we go. Hey, well, all right, so I'm going to get a little more. Oh. <laughs> a 
Uh, when uh, visitors to Washington, D.C. tour the capital, one of the unquestionable highlights is to visit the womb of Isis, the Capitol Dome, where, when peering upward from inside Isis's continuously pregnant belly, tourists can see hidden in plain sight the 4,664 square foot fresco officially called the Apotheosis of George Washington. Uh, apotheosis, of course, simply means to deify, to become a god, and by the way, also explains part of the reason that U.S. presidents, military commanders, and members of Congress lay in state in the U.S. Capitol Dome because the womb of Isis is where you go at death to magically be transformed into a god and to experience apotheosis. Those who believe that the United States Capitol was founded on Christianity and visit the Capitol for the first time will be surprised by the stark contrast to his uh, to uh, historic Christian artwork, for instance, uh, like the ascension of Jesus Christ into the heavens, when they compare that to the heaven that George Washington rises into from within the energized capital dome or womb of Isis, because it is not accompanied by God the Father or Jesus Christ or any of the angels you've read about in your Bible. The heaven that George Washington rises into is occupied by devils, pagan deities, Figures important to Masonic belief, these include Hermes, Neptune, Venus, Isis, Ceres, Minerva, and Vulcan, of course, Satan on earth, who energizes, who provides the uh, energies of Lucifer for the hands of the Masons. All right, I had much more to go, and that's because I was so sick I had no idea how far I was going to make it. Dr. Monte, thank you for your patience. God bless you, brother.